here in our kitchen. We need to do dishes. And you wanted to make cookies. Yeah. So we're gonna make cookies. <laughs> and uh, while we're doing that, uh, we're gonna talk about the lesson this week. So we got our sink, we got our dirty dishes, and the cookie supplies are in there somewhere. We'll find them, I suppose. Piece. But that's okay because most of them are done and while I'm finishing up these ones, <laughs> Kaylee is going to make another mess. to go on a walk. I feel like talking while we go on a walk. Don't worry, the cookies are already done. <laughs> we didn't leave the oven on. We're gonna, we're gonna look at Peter tonight and we're gonna look at how bad he was at waiting with Jesus during his final hours um, because he wanted to fix it. And I've experienced that so many times where maybe a friend was like, hey this is what's going on in my life and it's really hard and I didn't really respond in true compassion. Hey, maybe you could try this. <laughs> Why is this not working? <laughs> I wasn't really hearing them. I wasn't really sitting with them in it. They need someone to just be with them in it. Maybe there won't be a resolution. Maybe there will just be a next hard thing that the Lord uses in their life to teach them. It's so valuable to sit with that person in their pain. part of tonight is Peter is really bad at waiting. So there's almost this endurance that needs to happen in this season of not being able to control. What advice do you have for someone who's in a season like that? We all have been there where we've had to wait on something, whether it was a test coming back, you have that health issue, we're waiting to hear whether your family member is doing okay. We're waiting <laughs> on a vaccine, we're waiting on something that actually will promise security. But in the insecurity, we realize we're not in control. <laughs> and we never have been. No matter how much you want to be, you're not the one that's got this. <laughs> you weren't created for that. You were created to depend on someone who is far more trustworthy than yourself. <laughs> We've realized right now that we can't finish a lot of things we started. And that's painful to feel like everything just kind of <laughs> crumbled around us. In that heartbreak, we find that there's so much comfort, and I don't think we would experience that comfort anywhere else. We wouldn't, we wouldn't look for it. We wouldn't say, Lord, we need you, unless we were in a position where we had to wait on him. He's going to complete what he started in you. He will. COVID-19 can't stop that.
have to say to someone who has made a mistake, who desperately wants to follow Jesus and do it well, but is feeling the weight of the guilt or the condemnation? Mm. I think my first thought is Jesus came for you and me. <laughs> Many times throughout Jesus' life, he looked at the people who appeared put together and said, I came for the people who knew that they had nothing to give me. They were human. Jesus came for you, the person who messed up and sees that they messed up. That is the starting point <laughs> of so much grace and so much growth that he has promised. If you're willing to come to him with that and say, Lord, I feel condemned, I feel wrong, nothing can separate you from the love of God, nothing. Mm -hmm.